This is Star Talk. How closely related is the Higgs boson to gravity? Would a further understanding of the Higgs give us some more give us more insight into gravity? I don't know any direct connection oh. between the Higgs boson and gravity. What's interesting about particle physics is that gravity is essentially irrelevant to everything that's going on down there. It is as irrelevant to particle physics as gravity is irrelevant to most insects. You see insects just crawl up the wall or crawl on the ceiling? Uh, annoyingly so, yes. Right. You, do you say, yo, there's gravity, you should be falling, you should be, you know, so other, th you know, at different size scales in the universe, different manifestations of the laws of physics will predominate. So for an insect, surface tension of liquid matters more than anything. That's why you have the, the Jesus spider. You ever see the Jesus spider? It's called the Jesus spider. It's cute. It walks on water. Oh, I thought because it died and then came back in three days. Uh, no. That's right. <laughs> was it the third day? On the third day he wrote, yeah. Well, okay. there's arguments about what constitutes a day and, you know, was it just a bad weekend? Yeah, right. yeah the whole Okay. <laughs> so the, it can walk on water. And you say, well, if I try to walk on water, if I'm not Jesus, I will fall through the surface of the water. Because the insect is responding to the surface tension of the water, which overrides the forces of gravity entirely. Entirely. That's why... So the world of the insect is very different from the world of us. And that's, that's why you can't take an insect and make a human-sized version of it and have it have any success doing what it was <laughs> as an insect. So a lot of sci-fi movies get that wrong? 100% <laughs> of them get it wrong. Okay? <laughs> giant ants, giant spiders. Kind. There's a reason why there are no giant spiders. Thank you know, they'd goodness. have to have really thick rhinoceros legs, and we'd call them a rhinoceros. <laughs> you know, you, you, can't, you can't just scale it up. The laws of physics, it's all the same laws of physics, but it manifests differently depending on your scale. See, I was going to ask that. Does that mean insects have a different physics? Like, there's are there, are there physics insects that, in little lab coats with different, different the, you know, results than we get? Their lab scientists would, probably would not yet have discovered gravity. Really? Yes, yes. So now you're a particle responding to, are you a positive charge or negative charge? Now you've got electromagnetic forces, which are 40 orders of magnitude stronger than gravity. 40 orders of magnitude, 40 powers of 10 stronger. So in other words, you take an electron and a proton and say, well, their mass, right? How much do they attract each other gravitationally? You can calculate that, write down that number. Now you do your equation for how much they attract one another because they're of opposite electrical charge. Write down that number. The electrical charge force of attraction is 10 to the 40th power stronger than gravity. So if you're a particle, you would never discover that gravity exists. Unless you had an experiment that can measure to the accuracy, to the precision of 40 powers of 10. And that ain't happening. Not no, on my calculator. Not on my <laughs> so, so, so I don't see any connection. There could be some subtle particle physics correspondence mm -hmm. that I don't know. But generally, when you talk about particles and particle physics, uh, you're not thinking about any large-scale gravitational phenomena. 